Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and the title of today's presentation is called Is Jesus an Alien? I know this is a controversial topic. I'm not trying to offend anyone or be facetious or anything like that. Instead, I want to take a serious look at first-hand modern-day cases which have overtly religious elements. I know there's a long history of research and speculation into UFOs and the Bible and the connection between the two and the possibility that Jesus was an extraterrestrial. I'm not an expert on Jesus in the Bible, uh, but I'm certainly aware of many of these connections. A lot of researchers have looked into them. Researchers such as Barry H. Downing, who wrote the Bible in the Flying Saucers, or Reverend Michael Carter, who wrote a series of books. A lot of people have written about the connection between the Bible and UFOs, and Jesus for that matter. Uh, and I'll touch on that briefly and some other evidence, but again, mostly I want to talk about modern day first-hand cases uh, in which people claim to have seen religious figures on board UFOs or had you know, cases involving overtly religious elements, because there are a lot of them. I have some of my own. I think this has something important to say about the UFO phenomena, and that's why I wanted to put together this video. So just touching briefly on the Bible, of course, we have the wheels of Ezekiel. That's often referenced as being possibly a UFO encounter. And certainly the book of Enoch as well, uh, which again, I won't get into because this is not my area of expertise, uh, but also the account of Jesus and his life. All the miracles surrounding him uh, are some that we've seen in modern day UFO accounts such as the Star of Bethlehem being interpreted as a UFO, uh, the virgin birth, uh, the many healing accounts surrounding Jesus, uh, levitation, walking on water, being raised from the dead, the prophecies. Uh, again, many elements that do occur in modern-day UFO accounts have led people to believe that possibly there is a connection there and that was Jesus an alien. Uh, I think it's very hard to say because this is something that occurred long ago, uh, but this is something that keeps recurring throughout history and up to the modern day. Uh, just touching on a briefly on a few more historical accounts, which I think are very interesting, are the many uh, paintings from various artists across the world who have depicted Jesus uh, in association with what look like modern day flying saucers. And uh, there's a lot of researchers who have already looked into this, so I'll just touch on this briefly and uh, show you a number of paintings with, which show this connection, such as the fresco painting of the crucifixion of Christ on the wall in the Spetsitskoveli Cathedral in Georgia, Russia. This dates back to the 11th century and it shows Jesus on the cross and behind him are two dome-shaped objects flying in the sky. Uh, the crucifixion of Christ, painted in 1350, in the Vesoki Dekani Monastery in Kosovo shows the crucifixion. And again, behind Jesus in the sky are two UFOs, each with an occupant inside. In 1432, Italian painter Massolino de Panacali created the miracle of the snow, which depicts a miraculous snowfall which occurred in August in the fourth century. Jesus and Mary are seen looking outside what appears to be the porthole of a bell-shaped craft. Behind them are dozens of metallic-looking silver saucer-shaped objects with domes on top, all flying through the sky. Uh, so this seems to be very clearly UFOs. For example, there's the Annunciation with St. Amidas, which was painted in 1486 by Carlo Crivelli, an Italian artist, it depicts the Virgin Mary shortly before she realizes she will give birth to Jesus, and in the sky above her is a saucer-shaped object with little lights around it. It is sending down a thin beam of light through the wall, striking Mary. And there are other paintings. A late 1400s painting called the Madonna with Saint Giovanni shows Mary praying over Jesus, and above her, a solid saucer-shaped object hovers in the sky. In the background, you can see a man staring up at the UFO. It looks like a modern-day account. Another one is the 1710 painting 
called The Baptism of Christ by Dutch artist Art de Gelde, which shows a saucer-shaped UFO sending down four beams of light striking Jesus. So clearly uh, early painters thought there was a connection here and they didn't even interpret this necessarily as far as we know in an extraterrestrial sense but it looks like modern day accounts and that's that's fascinating because it continues all the way up to the modern day one of the first researchers to really look into this connection deeply was researcher Jacques Vallée who points particularly to the case of the miracle of Fatima this occurred in 1917 over a period of months and uh, it's a very interesting case involving initially three children who saw a glowing female figure, the Lady of Fatima, floating in above them, glowing in light. She said she came from the sky and uh, gave them a series of prophecies. Basically, these prophecies were about upcoming wars, which did occur, and the decline of the influence of the church, which is something we are seeing of. So, at any rate, the Lady of Fatima said that they, she would come back with a display that would convince all the people that this was real. And some 70,000 people showed up and sure enough there was a display. It was described as the sun moving around in the sky. It clearly wasn't the sun. It was a large glowing disc-shaped object. Researcher L.A. Marzulli uh, is another researcher who's, who has pointed out the many modern-day UFO elements of this particular case, included, including reported healings, a wispy substance falling from the sky, feelings of paralysis, uh, this glowing disc-shaped object, the glowing figure, of course, and the prophecies, all sort of very common UFO uh, elements that we see. In modern day accounts. Uh, so yeah, he calls, Jacques Vallée called these mixed motif cases and the point is they're still occurring today. So let's get into some more modern day cases and I'll tell you about a few of my own uh, and see if we can make any sense of this. Uh, one case comes from contactee Howard Menger. He was a sign painter from Highbridge, New Jersey and was one of a handful of gentlemen claiming to be in contact with friendly human looking ETs throughout the 1950s. Uh, he ended up writing a book about his experiences called From Outer Space to You. And in his book, he describes not only seeing uh, UFOs and human looking ETs, but at one point he saw a figure that reminded him very much of Jesus. Uh, he saw this figure exiting a UFO, a, a saucer shaped craft. As Howard Menger writes, and I'm quoting, a tall handsome man with long blonde hair over his shoulders stood towering at the entrance. The sight of the man thrilled me. A slight enigmatic smile played on his lips as he looked at me, while the expression in his eyes was one of pure love and understanding. I felt like a small child, humble and loving, and I wanted to embrace him as a long lost friend. I believe I had the same feelings I would have experienced had the master Jesus just stepped out of the craft. I shall never forget this awe-inspiring experience. It is too strongly impressed in my soul by the love, compassion, and wisdom of this profound teacher. That wonderful being unlocked the door to my own soul and in a few brief moments planted the seeds of infinite knowledge in my subconscious, which over a period of months and years gradually seeps out to my conscious expression. It reminds me of the ministry of Jesus. And... Uh, the point is, he's not the only one reporting this type of experience. These are continuing to occur all over the world and do seem to occur to people with strong religious backgrounds, at least in a number of cases, though not all, as we'll see. Here's another case which was quoted by Jacques Vallée, uh, which he found interesting because it's one of these mixed motif cases. It involves a witness by the name of Jose Antonio de Silva, uh, from Brazil, and on May 3rd, 1969, De Silva was taken on board a craft by short helmeted figures, and inside he saw these human-looking figures, which 
uh, looked kind of like figures from the Bible, is how he described them. And uh, one of them grabbed his crucifix uh, at one point, and it was at this point that a Jesus-like figure appeared. Uh, at least according to the investigators who interviewed uh, Antonio, they think he was trying to describe Jesus. He seemed very reluctant to actually identify this figure as Jesus, but described him as about five feet tall, Caucasian, slender, bearded with long hair, dressed in a robe, and looking at him with very friendly eyes that were, quote, clear and serene. So it was clear to the interviewers that uh, Antonio believed this was Jesus, but was reluctant to admit this fact, or that he believed this. Uh, and it's very interesting because there are a lot of cases where people have seen, claimed to have seen what appears to be Jesus on board a UFO, and other religious figures for that matter. Take the case of Donna R. Butts. Uh, her case was investigated by Dr. S. Scott Corder. Uh, this is is a case that occurred in Russell, Kansas, and involves an abduction along a, a highway. And following this, Donna, the main witness, says that she was visited by an angelic figure in her room, which she believes was St. Peter. And as she says, and I'm quoting, this Peter was breathtaking. He wasn't human, or maybe I should say not physical, there he stood in purest white from head to foot, sparkling with millions of tiny lights. He was not in flowing robes like you might think, I would tell you. He was in what looked like a uniform of some sort. Uh, later, Donna would have more onboard UFO experiences, and she saw St. Peter, she believes, on board this UFO several times. One time she was taken on board, she was physically examined, she was made to drink a strange liquid, which she said actually improved her eyesight. They shined a weird light on her body, and then they took her to, quote, the throne room. And here's where she had an encounter with she, who she believes might have been Jesus. As she says, and I quote, whoever he, in capital letters, was, I saw him sitting in front of me. This brilliant being was in a white uniform similar to Peter's, only more magnificent. To either side of me were 12 beings in robes. They proceeded to give Donna a series of prophecies, most of which involved sort of the second coming, the rapture, the tribulation, this sort of thing, which they predicted would begin in Russell, Kansas. And as of yet, hasn't happened. But uh, here we have a very overtly religious elements in a modern-day UFO case. And are we to take this at face value? Are these screen memories? Is this actual divine intervention? Are ETs angels, as we would think of them? Uh, what's going on here? Here's another case which is very bizarre. Talk about mixed motif cases. This case is from Giorgio di Botanto of Geneva, Italy. And he ended up writing a book about his encounters, uh, UFOs, Angels, and Starships. And he had this very interesting experience. Giorgio, he says, where an angel appeared in his room and said his name was Raphael. And Raphael toward, told Giorgio to drive to a certain location on a certain evening and they would have another meeting. And so that's what Giorgio did. He drove to this remote location and instead of having a, an angelic visitation, he was confronted by a metallic saucer. As Giorgio says, it was, quote, a large silver plate in places like molten glass mixed with molten tin. Around it were lights of different colors, and underneath it were three large spheres. So this began a series of contact, contacts in which Giorgio, and actually his friends, he says, were taken on board this craft and met both Jesus and Mother Mary. Uh, so again, these are, he's saying this is, Physically, what happened, there, he's, he's not interpreting it, I should say, as a screen memory. 
Uh, he believes these are actually uh, religious uh, figures that he is being confronted with. As he describes Mother Mary, and I'm quoting, the young woman was dressed in soft sky blue. Her hair was chestnut blonde and fell to her shoulders. She wore a pair of sandals that seemed to be woven of gold. It gave off such an iridescent splendor of many colors as to be beyond description. She appeared to be about 20 years of age. Her lovely eyes were blue and expressed a great kindness and understanding. A quality of refinement and magnanimity radiated from her whole being. She moved with a graceful, natural simplicity as she came towards us. And like many other witnesses, uh, such as in the F Fatima incident, uh, sh uh, they were given prophecies of future disasters uh, striking our planet. This seems to be a common theme not only in these religious accounts and UFO accounts, but in the mixed motif cases. And there are very high profile modern day cases with this mixed motif, such as the case of Betty Andreessen, who interprets her gray type ETs as angels. Uh, she is a housewife mother from Ashburnham, Massachusetts, whose case was investigated by Raymond Fowler who wrote a series of books about them, The Andreasen Affair and many others. And uh, it became clear that while some of Betty's experiences involved you know, physical examinations and needles and implants and things like this, some involved what appeared to be very spiritual events or religious events. On one occasion, she was taken to see, quote, the one. And uh, she recalled under hypnosis that the aliens took her to this very large, majestic door and told her to, quote, go home and see the one. And uh, Betty recalled this under hypnosis and remembers what happened, but she says it was so personal, so sacred, that she want, does not want to tell anyone. She would not even tell Ray Fowler what happened. So it's clear that this was a very religious and personal experience for her. And uh, she's made no, uh, you know, she's always made it clear that she interprets this as religious and angelic. And uh, as Ray Fowler writes, Betty believes that her UFO experiences involved angels or messengers in the biblical sense of the word. Can it be Betty's experience is a modern day example of so-called angelic visitation? Religious and prejudice of the religious would cause many to reject such a thing. A few might say at this point that the religious interpretation of the ETI visitation was strictly the invention of the awestruck witness. However, can we legitimately separate the message from the messenger? Should we do the same with the Andreasen affair? So again, Raymond Fowler is pointing out the religious aspects and raising the question, is this something we take at face value? Is this experience being interpreted through a religious lens? Are the ETs religious themselves? Uh, are they angelic? Are these screen memories? Uh, what is going on here? Uh, so there are a lot of cases that really raise this kind of question. And one that really raises it uh, overtly is what happened to Denise and Bert Twiggs of Molala, Oregon. They wrote a book about their experiences uh, called Secret Vows, Our Lives with Extraterrestrials. And in this book, they describe what starts out as a very typical sort of missing time abduction by gray type ETs, uh, uh, they thought, but it evolved into sort of a very friendly and bizarre contactee account with friendly, mostly human-looking, humanoid uh, ETs. And they ended up having a very close relationship, were taken on board the craft many times, healed, sh shown nurseries, an alien zoo, the whole deal. I've quoted the, the Twigs case before, and it should come as no surprise that they also report some overtly religious elements, and in fact report seeing Jesus himself which they weren't particularly happy about because uh, they did not know how to interpret this. 
they were not super religious. They were part of a church, but ended up getting kicked out when they revealed their encounters. And now they have this experience, which as they said, and I'm quoting, we even believe we were open-minded, but our beliefs were put to the ultimate test when we recalled being taken to the community religious center to be introduced to Jesus. Our conscious minds rebelled, believing that Jesus died about 2,000 years ago. We refused to believe that Jesus would be alive on a mothership or anywhere else besides heaven, for that matter. More than once on the ship, we recalled seeing this entity known as Jesus, as well as beings surrounded by light. At first, we told no one of our encounters with Jesus and his angels, fearing that other humans would react the same way we did. But then we began hearing of other humans who also recalled seeing Jesus and the beings of light. We do not fully understand his appearance there, nor do we know its true implications. So it's interesting that they themselves had a hard time with it. And I think we see evidence of this in other cases. Uh, there was a case which uh, was actually someone who called into the Oprah Winfrey show. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey uh, di had a talk show, of course, for many, many years, and uh, of course tackled the UFO subject on at least one occasion, bringing on some people who said that they'd been taken on board a UFO. But during the show, she had someone call in and report her experience. And this lady who called in said that she saw what appeared to be Jesus. The lady said that she was taken from her bedroom. She went willingly. She's not sure why. And there was a craft landed near her home. She was brought inside. And as the woman said, and I quote, they told us that the Creator would be in in a moment. And this man walked in. This man stood about seven feet tall, and he was the most beautiful man I had ever seen in my life. He had white hair, a white beard, and he wore a white robe. And he told me, he told all of us, that we were there for a purpose, that the information we would be given would not directly affect us, but our children. What they told us, more or less, is that the men are going to screw up the world and it's going to be the women that have to get it out. And we were given information, which I don't know what it is. They told us we wouldn't be allowed to remember until the time comes. So yeah, this was on the Oprah Winfrey show. <laughs> and uh, we have that same prophecy being given again of uh, upcoming disasters. But that... I'm not sure what to make of these accounts where people said they've seen Jesus on board a UFO. Uh, but there are enough where I think we have to take them seriously. And there are other cases that have weird religious elements. Here's a very interesting case which was reported to MUFON, I believe. This occurred in Denver, Colorado uh, on August 12th, 2012. And the lady who had this experience also reported it to Linda Moulton Howe and uh, says she called coast to coast and reported this sighting. She saw this star-like object hovering overhead and she became fearful and she started talking to it to see if this was you know, friendly. Was this something that was from Jesus or was it demonic? <laughs> and as she says, and I quote, I asked it if it was sent from the Christ Jesus, and if so, would it blink off and back on? The star dimmed down and lit back up again. I then asked, again inaudibly, telepathically, if it was here for the rapture. It dimmed down and lit up again twice. So here we have someone in telepathic communication with the UFO, and um, it's sort of signaling her these religious messages. <laughs> It's very interesting. Uh, here's another case which I'm not sure uh, about the source or how seriously to take this case, but uh, the writer of the case, R. L. Hobbs, uh, does list the name of the witness and his location. Uh, according to R. L. Hobbs, Nigel Harshaw of Suffolk, England, went to visit the United States, in specific Nevada. This was on January 28th, 2017. Nigel Harshaw was in Nevada and had a UFO come down and take him on board. And there were human-looking beings on board. And according to Nigel, these beings said, we have good news. Have you heard the good news? And told him, Jesus loves you. And so <laughs> uh, 
Nigel found this very perplexing because he actually was not a religious person and he didn't know what to interpret it and he just kind of went along with it because he didn't want them to freak out. Uh, but the beings told him that Jesus had come to their planet some 400,000 years ago. And uh, that's what they were here to talk about, sort of like extraterrestrial missionaries. Uh, at any rate, it's a bizarre case, if true. And uh, the witness was not happy. He says, honestly, I wish it had happened to someone else. Uh, whether true or not, it certainly fits the pattern we see in other bizarre cases. Here's one case which was reported to the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. This occurred on July 25th, 2014, to a family of three, a father, a mother, and son. Uh, they decided to go camping at Mount Rainier, uh, at a campgrounds at, in Mount Rainier, Washington, Washington State. And uh, they had a very bizarre experience involving a UFO. And uh, they had some disorientation, what possibly could be missing time, uh, which uh, that's what they've concluded, actually, because later this, they had varying memories of the incident, and the son recalled seeing this very tall being approach the campsite and talk to the father. And the father and mother did not remember this, at least not at first. And uh, that evening, they decided to sleep in the car instead of the campsite itself because they couldn't light a fire. And uh, <coughs> he, the father had a very strange dream. In the dream, he saw this very tall humanoid who announced itself, identified itself as God, and proceeded to give him a series of prophecies showing him visions of war-torn countries across the planet in the future. Um, and told him these things will happen. And the witness said, why are you showing me this? You know, what does this mean? And uh, the next thing the being showed him was an image of Jesus wearing a crown of thorns, the very famous picture of Jesus with a crown of thorns around his head. So the witness does not know what to make of this uh, because he is not a religious person but he became very concerned because these prophecies started coming true. He watched them come true on the news, and it really has affected him profoundly. As he says, and I'm quoting, I am an atheist, and the fact that the being told me that he was God, and then the picture of Jesus, has done a number on me mentally. I keep my head on my shoulders, but I am just wondering if anyone else saw something that night, as this interaction has led me down a path of intrigue. Uh, he definitely feels like he was shown future events because, again, he, he kept seeing them. And there's that sort of pattern again of people being given prophecies, usually of upcoming disasters. So I think this is a very important factor, as I'll get to later. But I want to quote another modern day case, which occurred in 2018 to a lady by the name of Bettina Rodriguez Aguilera. Actually, it occurred earlier than that, but in 2018, Bettina of Florida uh, decided that she was going to run for Congress for the U.S. House of Representatives, and she started her campaign, and of course, the media started digging deep into her background, and that's when they found out that she gave an interview in which she claimed that at age seven, uh, she had had an extraterrestrial encounter. And Bettina says that the ETs she saw looked pretty much exactly like the statue that uh, is in Rio de Janeiro called Christ the Redeemer. It's a very famous statue. It's huge. And uh, she believes that perhaps um, this is what they looked like and that they were associated with this somehow. Uh, they certainly did give her a very uh, religious type of message as they told her, and I'm quoting, God is a universal, universal energy. It's in everything. God talks to people and they understand it in different ways, but there's only one religion. So definitely uh, it appears that uh, people are having this, I mean, we know they're having this experience, but whether this is a, due to religious interpretation or are they actually experiencing this is not in entirely clear. Uh, but we really can't talk about UFOs and Jesus without at least mentioning 
uh, the other end, UFOs and Satan de and demonic phenomena. Uh, and I know there are a lot of people who believe that UFOs are demonic in origin. And I have to tell you, I've investigated angels and demons both in some detail. So uh, I'm not completely ignorant about this, these phenomena, which as near as I can tell are separate because for the most part, people who encounter angels aren't seeing UFOs. People who experience a demonic haunting aren't seeing uh, UFOs either. People who see UFOs, for the most part, aren't seeing angels <laughs> or Jesus or anything like this. However, there are weird connections. Uh, one weird case pointing towards the possible demonic origin of UFOs comes from a witness by the name of Michael Corey, who back in 1972, had joined a religious group. This is in June Lake, California. And uh, Michael had joined a spiritual group which talked about Jesus and Gabriel being extraterrestrials and taken on board a UFO. And uh, he was uncomfortable with these ideas as he couldn't reconcile them to the Bible. And he left the group and he says the next morning he had a very interesting experience on which he was able to banish a UFO in the name of Jesus, is basically what he says happened. And as I quote, the next morning I was up early and on the way to Mammoth and the sky was blue and as clear as can be and a spacecraft came up over the pine trees in full sight. I looked at it and pointed my finger at it and said these words, Satan, you're a liar. In the name of Jesus, be gone. The craft shook in the air and disappeared and I've never seen one to this day. So, the witness is ob obviously convinced that uh, the UFO phenomenon is demonic in origin. Uh, that's something he believes today. And as he says, and I quote, I believe that this entire UFO lore is just the demons trying as hard as they can to do the job they do so well, deceive. I'm telling this story knowing that many will think I'm lying or fabricating this for a personal religious view, but I promise you that nothing could be further from the truth. At the time, I was not a Christian, but these events plus others have helped me find that way of living. I witness these things and I tell you that I stand by this statement. So this was his experience. We have to respect that, certainly, and uh, he's not the only one who's reporting this type of thing. I scoured the files of MUFON and I honestly was, thought I would find many more cases. I found just these two uh, that had something to say towards, you know, interpreting this in this manner. And uh, another case from MUFON is, uh, occurred on August 22nd, 2007. A woman had gone out to see the meteor showers. This is in Brevard, North Carolina. And uh, she saw a UFO. And she felt like it was making, or sort of a threatening maneuver at her. And uh, again, she b believes that this is a demonic phenomena. So sh this is what she says happened. According to the witness, and I quote, I felt a surge of courage and boldness from the Holy Spirit within to challenge these lights with the truth of Jesus. I shouted out to the lights that I did not fear them, that they had no control over me, that Jesus would re return soon to establish his kingdom forever, that they, the demonic spirits, would be thrown in the lake of fire soon, and that I was commanding them in strength through the Lord Jesus that they be gone immediately so that they may not deceive anyone else sky watching that night. Uh, and sh she says they disappeared at that point. So whether the, these two cases are you know, coincidental, um, the witnesses certainly don't think so. And I think we have to respect that. They feel like these UFOs were listening to them. Uh, but I do think that we have to be clear that these is being looked at with a very strong religious viewpoint. And uh, this witness certainly believes UFOs are demonic. As she says, I do believe that people do see UFOs, ghosts, etc., but that they are simply a deceptive tool used by Satan to confuse and ensnare the unsaved. I believe this UFO deception will play a key role very soon in world affairs. So she's saying not only are UFOs demonic, but all paranormal phenomena. And this is something that uh, many people who hold this interpretation of UFOs uh, do believe to be true. And again, I couldn't find a whole lot of evidence for it. These were the two cases that I found which had some, you know, certainly anecdotal evidence towards it. I thought I would find more, but I didn't. 
Uh, there's actually more angelic cases pointing towards this phenomena being angelic, which I find interesting. Uh, but sometimes, uh, yeah, you get these weirdly mixed motif cases. Uh, for example, Anne Druffel is a very well-known researcher. She's written a number of books, The Tonga Canyon Contacts, uh, Firestorm about James McDonald, a, a UFO scientist. And also, she wrote a book about how to defend yourself against alien abduction. And according to Anne Druffel, it's possible to halt an encounter. She has a number of cases in which people have been successful doing this. And she cites a resistance technique number eight, which she calls appealing to spiritual personages. And uh, what she's saying, again, is calling out to some religious figure, such as Jesus or um, an angel, can actually halt a UFO encounter. And she does provide one case, uh, at least, uh, one prominent case, certainly, in which uh, it appears that this did happen. The witness is uh, Melissa McLeod. And according to Melissa, she was having encounters with uh, ETs, where she was being taken on board a craft. They would come, they'd paralyze her in her bedroom and pull her on board. And she learned to resist this. She says if she called out to St. Michael, this would sometimes break the paralysis. She would call out verbally, Dear St. Michael, help me. And uh, this seemed to work for her on multiple occasions. So uh, whether or not this is actually an effective technique, uh, I don't know because I certainly don't have uh, a lot of cases like that, but I do have at least one <laughs> that's very close uh, to something like this and actually has multiple religious elements to it. Uh, having you know, talked to hundreds of people who've had UFO encounters, most I can confidently say have not interpreted it this way or described overtly religious elements, but a few have. It definitely does come up. And uh, for example, my latest book, Onboard UFO Encounters, I present a couple of cases which have religious elements. I present 15 cases of people who've been taken on board, but 12, I would say, believe they're dealing with extraterrestrials in the classic sense. There's no overtly religious elements, but a few do have some. In fact, uh, one guy by the name of Ron had a very friendly encounter as a young teenager in New Kensington, Pennsylvania in 1965 where he saw UFO, human occupants. Uh, he had missing time but recalled what happened. He recalled being taken on board. And these were f very friendly human looking people who he said radiated goodness and perfection to such a way that he connected it to angels. And he feels very strongly that the UFO phenomena has a strong angelic connection. And uh, he's not the only one that feels this way. It's one of the rare cases I've personally investigated. Um, but uh, there was another case in this, this same book where a gentleman believes he's dealing with a phenomena that's essentially demonic. This is the case of Ramon. I did a whole video on Ramon and uh, his experiences, because they're very extensive, and I'm not going to repeat them all here, other than to say he's been abducted his entire life. He saw ETs while in the military. Uh, while in Vietnam, he had sightings, had strange experiences in a hospital in Japan, and uh, back here at Camp Pendleton in Southern California, and had an abduction experience outside of Los, Los Angeles where he was taken on board a UFO, and he says it was a very scary experience for him. Um, he was, uh, they tried to seduce him with a female looking alien. They showed him alien hybrid babies. Uh, they took him to the control room. It's a fairly standard case. He was being physically examined. Whole time he's looking for a way off the ship. He's got a very strong religious faith. Uh, he grew up not religious, but became increasingly religious and feeling really out of control and pushed around by these gray type ETs, he's come to interpret them as being demonic uh, because he feels they're deceptive. And uh, 
while on board this UFO sitting in a chair, he was fighting for consciousness when he says, Saint Michael appeared, the Archangel Michael. And uh, he says, not only that, there were angels on either side, human looking, glowing figures uh, with olive complexions and very friendly eyes. And uh, they commanded, wake up, release him. <laughs> And uh, at this point, Ramon was effectively escorted from this UFO and uh, taken down a ramp and back to his car. And he says that as he went down this ramp that there were actually rows of angels on either side of him, not just a few, dozens of angels in the classic sense. So I am not sure what's going on in Ramon's case. Uh, his case does have a lot of very bizarre elements, and this is certainly one of them. And yet, he, again, he's not the only one who's reporting this kind of thing. So is this his beliefs that are causing this to happen? Is this a show put on for him, a screen memory? Are we dealing with actual angels in the classic sense? Um, you know, are UFOs demonic? I don't know. I can only present the evidence we have that either supports or denies these theories. And uh, every now and then you run into these mixed motif cases. Uh, one lady who I interviewed for the book Onboard UFO Encounters is Lynette. And she's had experiences with gray type ETs her whole life. And they've given her an enormous amount of information. And they told her flat out that they have been visiting humanity for millennia and that the people who they visited interpreted them as angels. They told her, who you thought were angels were us. So they said that flat out, that uh, people are actually misinterpreting them. And now that we've got, you know, actually they're <laughs> extraterrestrials. So perhaps, you know, there's not only issues here with screen memories, but, you know, interpretation issues. And I have to tell you, there's one guy I interviewed for that same book, Joe, who is not entirely convinced he's seeing ETs or for that matter, angels or demons or anything like this. He prescribes to the possibility that the UFO phenomena, certainly as he's experienced it, uh, might be something else, an intelligence that wears different masks and is able to put on sort of whatever appearance it wants. This is the Jacques Vallée John Keel, you know, Lauren Coleman school of thought that perhaps we're dealing with interdimensional beings, uh, an intelligence of great power that you know has the ability to intervene in people's lives, but it's not extraterrestrials as we would think of it. Uh, so I've definitely looked into a lot of cases like these, and I know there are others out there. Uh, I think it would start to get repetitive at this point. I looked into all these cases above and others, and for my book. Not From Here, Volume 3. And uh, yeah, there's some very interesting details <laughs> uh, which definitely coincide precisely with modern-day UFO accounts. And for that matter, near-death experiences. We see a number of people who describe near-death accounts as being taken up a, you know, into a tunnel of light and meeting Jesus and being given prophecies and being spiritually transformed. So there are some very interesting correlations between all of these accounts. And, I've, and I honestly am still not sure what this connection is. Uh, having studied angels and demonic phenomena, I'm convinced they're separate in, in their structure, you know, in their, main, in, in their main part of it. The reason I say that is because people who describe demonic hauntings aren't seeing UFOs. And people who describe angelic visitations, you know, they just aren't seeing UFOs as well. And most people who see UFOs aren't describing these overtly religious elements. And in fact, the actual number of cases that I could find is statistically almost insignificant. It's very, very small. Uh, in my own, having talked to hundreds of people, I've only run across it a few times. So I'm not sure um, how to interpret it. Um, I have to respect the witnesses and their interpretations because it's their experience. Uh, but I do feel that probably most people are seeing extraterrestrials in the classic sense. Uh, but some people perhaps are seeing angels and that we should take these cases at face value. 
Or perhaps sometimes ETs are putting on a display or a screen memory. Or for that matter, perhaps some of these are interdimensional entities uh, masquerading <laughs> as angels or ETs or what have you. So it's hard to say, but I do, did want to point out that there are a number of cases with these strong, overt religious elements. I've got them myself. Lots of cases with a little bit of bleed through and definitely a strong correlation among what actually happens on board a UFO as opposed to a religious experience. So that in itself is very interesting and significant. And that's why I really wanted to cover this video because yes, there's a lot of historical evidence supporting the possibility that Jesus is an alien or that UFOs might be angelic in origin. Uh, but uh, not a lot of research into modern day cases. And I was interested to find that, yes, there's a few cases which point towards a demonic origin, but uh, many more cases pointing towards an angelic uh, interpretation, whereas really the vast majority of cases support, I think, you know, just looking at objectively, a, an interpretation that these are extraterrestrials in the classic sense, as we would think of, you know, extraterrestrials, biological beings on a planet, very much like us, but different. So that's this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks once again for listening. And like I always like to say, keep having fun. <laughs>